Terry McCarthy. Ew. Creepy, creepy. Anyway, made a video. Should you have kids? Uh, it's kind of a direct question. And if you really add it up, what having kids is, I think the answer is just kind of obvious. That you don't really have a right to play God with something's welfare when it's a world that you can't guarantee anything. You can't even guarantee you're going to be alive another fucking day. That you're not going to leave your kid an orphan. You know, being raised by grandma. Do you really want your mother raising your kid? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want my mother anywhere near my kids. Nice enough person, but no. Doesn't have a clue what life on earth is doing. Anyway. Um, yeah. So, it's good. I suppose it's good this subject is brought up. It's time for another thing. I don't know, but it, it's just, this is all so, oh, God, such nauseating images. So, so this whole idea is, is that you do this making of creatures here, and you're supposed to have fun doing it, right? I, I mean, the idea is, is that you know there are psychological animals that every single event, right, if you think about your own life, you know that there's certain events that happen that, ooh, that left a mark. <laughs> you know, sometimes they leave real marks, like you lost your arm or something because of some stupid thing. But, you know, there's a ton of these little scars, psychological scars created by events. And there's no way as a parent, right, if I, if I had a kid, right? How am I going to have fun deciding when I let the, like, say he's a boy, I let him cut the grass for the first time or when, you know, they go out driving for the first time or something. That's supposed to be fun, right? Now, if you take this job at all seriously, if you sincerely are supposed to be saying that, oh, I'm going to so much enjoy loving them, right? So you actually cherish them and love them. It's like me thinking it's fun to watch the cat sleep in the driveway. No, that's not fun. I don't go, oh, look how cute. No. No. It's terrifying. How could this be fun? If you took it at all seriously, I'm just saying, there's no way you personally could win if you have any character at all, right? I mean, only an individual with absolutely no character could say, I'm going to have fun raising humans. I'm going to have fun, okay, challenging um, the, the game odds, challenging the machine, the machine that's actually a combine. You actually know it can grind them into shit. It can give them cancer. It can cut off their limbs. It can leave them paralyzed. It can... You're actually saying it would be fun for you to watch the thing you created play peewee football or something. When you know there's actually a chance for this stupid game that it will have its neck snapped and be paralyzed for the rest of its fucking life. That's your definition of fun. Being responsible is fun. Responsible for making life and death decisions is fun. You'd love to be in charge of the military so you could decide to kill people and blow them up and burn their skin off. You would consider that fun. Oh, what a fun challenge. Yeah, I'd say you have to have absolutely zero character. No character. No, you have to be just a nihilist cunt to say, I would really love to be a parent. You have to be a brainless, mindless fucking lunatic to say you want the responsibility to decide whether I'm going to torment it by obliging it to take violin lessons or I'm going to tormented by saying, well, look, yes, you have to do this studying thing. You can't play video games, and you can't do this, and you can't, no, 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 no. That's all fun for you. It's fun to explain to the kid when it's sick how it's God's will or some other bullshit. That's fun for you. That's a good time. Lying is good fun. Now, you can tell it about Santa Claus and other fairy tales. Lying's fun. Right, so I guess I just already made the video, right? I mean, there's nowhere to go with this subject unless you're an idiot. So, sorry, but you're an idiot.
listen to give you their thoughts on whether or not having kids is a good idea. This is a topic that comes... I mean, it's always a bad idea. I mean, the, the question is, is whether you're entitled. Am I entitled to uh, uh, project my emotional need on some thing that I'm going to make be a servant to my need? And that's the only reason why anyone ever has a kid. There's nothing rational about it. The universe isn't going, please, 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 have a child. Please, please. I beg you. Please, please, please. That's not happening. There's no rational reason. There's only like racist reasons, ego reasons, vain reasons. There's no fucking rational psychology. There's no, there's no rational frame of mind, rational thinking process. It's all just a fucking emotional compulsion you're defending. And this is coming from a vegan, right? Who's arguing that the, the meat eaters should get rational. They should use their brain and say, okay, I'm, I'm addicted, I'm compulsive, this is a, a, an acquired taste, and I have to acquire a new taste. She's arguing that they have to overcome their psychology, right? And yet she's indulging it now and saying, but no, this psychology is okay. Tormenting children is okay. That's, that's reasonable psychology. Your need to do that, oh, that we can't stop. a lot in the vegan community in fact vegan gain i guess i don't see it all that much you know yeah vegan gain seems to be pretty much you know i personally you know kind of thing not really uh you know he's been burned by a few chicks that kind of thing i think he just doesn't want the liability so yeah this is just recently documented his vasectomy uh, Harley Johnson's been talking about this for... Oh, I guess that was, yeah, Harley first. Yeah, Harley's the one who's pretty much, I would wonder about his intense <sighs> vegan gains. Yeah, maybe he's different. He seems to have some principles. A few years. And lots of people in our community do seem to decide that they don't want kids, that it's not the right thing for them. Well, wanting to have kids. Again, again, the, the question is is whether or not, first, like I said, you ask the question, should you have kids? You ask the question, you know, let's, let's analyze it as a thing that should happen in the world versus a thing that, well, should you indulge? So again, if I just keep changing the question, should you eat a hamburger, you seem to know the right answer. But somehow, if I ask, should you have kids, all of a sudden you think it's something that, well, we have to take into account their emotional need. Well, why is, that, why is the emotional need to exploit a child for your vain purposes have anything to do with, you know, because you have to pass on your genetic code because I have especially cool ancestors. Even though you're polluting it with some partner who might not have so, his ancestors might not be so fucking cool. And you're mixing two things anyway that you have no idea what you're going to end up with anyway. I mean, if you mix two things that look solid, <laughs> you might not get something solid that pops out. Candies have a few of those. So why should you care about what I think? Well, obviously you shouldn't. There's no right answer. <clears throat> oh, there's no right answer. So there's no right answer to this ethical question of whether you should use a conscious sentient being as a device for your gratification of some emotional need. No, I think there is a right answer. It's the same right answer that it comes to exploiting animals for the same purpose of your gratification. You shouldn't exploit anything for your gratification. And if you rationally look at the world, you can just do the math. You can say, hey, is the, is the world a beautiful place? Is the nest all built for the baby? Are the, little, are the eggs ready to be laid in the beautiful nest that's all prepared and everything's going to work out just fine? Have we done our best to make a really cool nest for all the little eggs? Quite obviously not. So at any time in history, I mean, it hasn't looked too fucking good, but it really doesn't look all that fucking good for the prospects for any one of these little fucking eggs that's going to hatch in the shitty nest that we've built. Even in the civilized countries, you know, the odds are it's going to be working for $10 an hour and not have enough money to even lay eggs itself. It's going to have to put its little egg on food stamps. Government meat. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be eating government buffalo. Fuck. But I'm 34 now. It's something I think about. And uh, I never wanted kids. All my life, I never wanted them. Right. And all of a sudden, I have this biological clock. Well, you're just being such a cliche then, aren't you? I mean, can't you just smell the cliche coming? Can't you just say to yourself, holy fuck, I just got cliched. 
I mean, I sort of had it, you know, a midlife crisis thing. I started thinking about motorcycles and, and you know, go West young man. And I had a couple, you know, even though I was an old man. And so, yeah, you, and you just say, oh, cliche midlife crisis. There it is. I just had one of those. So why don't you just say cliche biological clock womany bullshit. Get over your bullshit. And then about two years ago, oh, I disgusting. suddenly understood disgusting. why other people do for the first time. Oh, she understood why other people do for the first time. So this ought to be really enlightening, right? Okay, here's the here's the real deal. This is why people have kids. She understands it now. Okay, here it comes. I haven't watched this video yet, so it's going to be a... I'm, I'm, I'm just sitting here pins and needles waiting for this one, boy. We're going to finally get the big explanation. Why assholes play silly games with biological organisms. And uh, now I feel like I could go either way. And I really mean that because I think either choice has massive benefits. Either choice has massive benefits. Well, isn't that a wonderful way to make a rational statement <laughs> you know i mean really that's a rational statement both of them are hugely beneficial you know if i enter the lottery it's hugely beneficial and if i don't enter the lottery it's hugely beneficial oh, come on well but anyway let's go ahead with this nonsense but you'll also have nagging regrets and doubts no matter what you do. You just don't hear people. I don't think so. I really don't. So you don't have, you didn't have any nagging doubts and regrets before. So it's just this last couple of year thing, right? Where all of a sudden you, well, see, we didn't get the magic. Why? She didn't answer the question, right? I now know. And she didn't answer the I now know why people have kids thing. It's some emotional thing. Oh, that's the answer. It's emotional, like loving hamburgers. Well, talking about them, especially not parents, you know, who's going to say they regret having kids. But they just don't want to entertain. Uh, well, they will say it, actually. I got my parents to say it. You know, they had four kids, and one of them died of cancer horribly, and the rest of them, you know, we're, we're all kind of good people, but we're not too much like our parents. And, uh, you know, they wanted to world travel and do all kinds of things. And obviously, four kids limited, so we didn't world travel. We just domestically traveled a lot. Um, but, you know, in hindsight, they figured out, oh, gee, this probably wasn't a great idea. So that's good. But it's too late, right? Too little, too late. But I think if you ask some old people, oh, yeah, well, yeah, you know, they might say, shit, yeah, that was a, phew. They'll probably go all the way back to the wedding day and say that was a mistake, too the idea their life might have gone better the other way because the decision is such a huge one. I just don't know how your life goes better having kids if you have any brain at all. Again, I just don't understand how exactly my life has improved if I now have something to be obsessed over, the welfare of this thing I've injected into the world, and everything that happens to it is basically going to be my fault. I mean, I'm the one who created it. I made the design. I ac accepted the environment. Uh, this is an acceptable nest I farted it into. And if it falls out of the nest, it's entirely my goddamn fault. There's no one else to blame but me. I just don't... I, I, for the life of me, please explain how that's fun, how my life is somehow improved by doing that. And the odds are the kid is not going to be anything. The odds are... He's not going to be Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods or uh, anything. Name somebody who's somebody. Is anybody anybody anyway? I mean, I've only loved one human being in my life, Jack Kevorkian, I think. Is, is he going to be Jack? Is, the odds are, is he going to be Jack Kevorkian? No. The odds are he's going to be some asshole that I'm going to fucking goddamn probably despise. Because I don't like humans. Because I'm rational. People want to believe it's the only, it's the best choice, you know. Make a predator. Oh, yeah, what a great idea. I'll make a consuming predator to go out and predate on the world. And I'll feel so good about it. I just, you're going to love the first, the first time he rapes a woman and you get to sit there and irrationally defend him. <sighs> Fuck. I'm his mommy. <laughs> I unconditionally love the little rapist. 
But for me, from a really young age, I thought having kids was total idiocy. Yeah, yeah right. And then you somehow drank a lot of good old Great Britain lead-infested water from the Thames, I guess, and now you're brain damaged, and now you somehow think it's a good idea to torture some victim so you can gain some kind of emotional gratification when he rapes his first bitch. <laughs> yeah, I just don't get it. Sorry, no fucking sale. What exactly do you think is going to happen? Are you so fucking vain? Are you so fucking conceited that you think you're going to be able to control the experiment? That your little monster is going to come out to be just such a wonderful human being because you're going to make the difference. You have superpowers. No, you don't. No, when I realized that everyone dies anyway... The sheer not knowingness of what's going on, the fact that your parents... And, and right, that doesn't even bother you, right? So, I mean, your mother is getting of a frail age, and it doesn't concern you that she could break her hip, and then she gets an infection in the hospital, and then she dies. And you're not concerned about how she dies. This doesn't harp on you in any way. You're not worried and concerned. It's fun to think about your mother dying. That's part of the fun of life. Yeah, fun. This can't help you with any of this. They can't reassure you everything's going to be okay. Uh, Yet still, they dragged you into it. I mean, it seems like a bizarre thing to do. Yeah, yeah, right. They did it when they were dumb and stupid, right? That's when most people have kids is when they're dumb and stupid. And now you, like some lunatic, is stepping up later in life and saying, gee, I decided to get dumb and stupid. It's like Piro smoking cigarettes when he's 35 years old or something. Some idiot who fucks, oh yeah, I'm 35 years old. I heard all the statistics. I know it's addictive. I know all this stuff. And now I'm going to make a mistake a fucking 11-year-old usually makes. And now that's all you're talking like. Well, gee, I'm 30-whatever, five, and I've decided to now be reckless and stupid. Like a 21-year-old. I decided to, even though I know all about the horrors and the, the statistical implications and the fact that we're all going to die and that uh, you're not going to win in the end and it's all kind of just a horrible battle to fight all the little disabilities and fetters that and try to drag you down every day there's little things attacking you your own body attacks you um fuck all that i'm just gonna pretend it's all gonna be okay and and life's hard work as well it's not cheap and there's a lot of <laughs> yeah and it's really not it, it's dirt cheap though death is dirt cheap in the rest of the world so yeah you won't even have to look at it. you won't even have to see death in the rest of the world right because nothing gets to linger nothing gets to go to the nursing home it'd be a pain in the ass right they get the you die you're dead you know you got two weeks and that's it you know that's that's as much tolerance as there for the for the dying process two weeks uh, you're not going to get medicated and you're not going to get food supplements and there's not cans of insure at the drugstore to go feed you. Um, no, you're going to be dead and, and, and your corpse is going to pick, pick to dry in you know, a few days. And so, yes, it'll be unseen, unnoticed, and you can all pretend it's all joyous and happy life fun fun. constant upkeep i mean what the actual fuck are you seriously telling me that sex and chocolate are sufficiently good to make up for all this because i'm not so sure sex and chocolate are make up for what yeah so you're just basically okay so you're making the argument that you're not so sure that life's worth it but you're uncertain whether you should <laughs> you know create a new one so you're not even sure it's like just like so lame you're not you're even worse than the idiot who goes to las vegas at least they have some notion that they're going to win you're sitting there basically saying conceding and you're going to lose and you're still going with somebody else's money and then when you look at the lives of parents i i did used to wonder why does anyone make that decision to have kids because the injustices of parenthood seem immense oh, well i don't know they're not it seems their, the injustices are minor compared to the injustice of their rape, essentially, of their children in the sense that, look at these assholes. They try to conform their children to be what they are. Um, they, in, they indoctrinate them in the same addictions, the same fucking moronic behaviors, the same ideals and values. Um, they suffocate them with that crap, or else they give them so much latitude 
that they're you know they they're dead on on reckless road in you know before they hit their twenties. Parents suck. So they don't take it seriously. Again, if somebody takes it seriously, they're not going to do it. If somebody thinks about it first, they're not going to do it because they're going to realize this is a huge motherfucking responsibility that there's really no way you can trust anything out there in the world to care for your kids. You have to be its guardian. You have to be the protector of its intellect and its welfare. You, you, you. And it's a fucking 24-hour-a-day job, period. No breaks, no, no peace of mind. You don't get to go to sleep and say, oh, I've taken care of everything, everything's covered. No, you go to bed every night worried that you've missed something. You missed an opportunity. You just fucked the kid up because you didn't do the right thing. Yeah, fun. Boy, that just, I can't wait. You, you don't know whether your kids will thank you for... It, um... If it does thank you, it's because you made it retarded. There's no other reason for it to thank you. They may not adopt your world view. You are financially enslaved for a, a big portion of your life. You have to work in jobs that you wouldn't otherwise be stuck with. And how do you pay enough attention to your partner once you've got this new helpless tyrant in your life? Well, again, yeah, that's all over with. But, I mean, any asshole could figure... Like I said, as a kid, I could figure that out. Why would I want to be with a woman, make her pregnant so her vagina can basically have the biggest dick ever made shoved through it? Didn't make much sense to me. I mean, why, why don't I just sell her on the street if I, you know, if I, if I want that to happen? No chance now. Oh, well, now it's really ruined. And you, you love this kid more than anyone else you've ever known. I mean, And right, for no good reason, but because it's yours genetically, because it's some sort of got your signature written on it, some vain genetic code. And now that's how I define love. I love based on genetic code. Gee, that's so, that's so high-minded. That's so intellectually sensible. Gee, that's just such a great principle. Love thy genetic code. Ugh. Pathetic. This is like falling in love in a completely new way. That I mean, really, if you really need to take care of kids, there's kids all over. Go be a big sister or something. There's lots of kids that need taken care of, and they be cared of exactly on your time and on your schedule. You don't have to adopt. You can just fucking be a friend. Be a kid's friend. There's lots of ways to volunteer to help kids. Shit. You didn't realize existed. And yet there is zero, nothing you can do to protect them from all the shit that is going to happen in the future. Right, so you say it's, it's, there's no right answer. So there's zero chance of you protecting them from catastrophic destruction, yet there's no right answer to this question. You have no power to control the experiment. Go ahead and build the nuclear power plant, because if it blows up, so what? It's only to a nuclear plant that blows up, right? It's only the kid's torture. It's not my torture. I'm not going to be tortured. The kid's going to be tortured, so fuck it. Nah, no problem. I win. Is that it? Seems like the hamburger argument. I mean, the people eating the hamburger seem to think they won. No problem. Where's the disaster? Where's the catastrophe? I just ate the hamburger and I had a beer and it was really good. Oh, where's the loss? I don't see any losses anywhere. And they leave you as well. So it doesn't seem like the best deal, really, you know. And the oh, yeah, and you wouldn't want them to leave. <laughs> Leaving you is just, oh, what a tragedy that I don't get to live with other people for no good reason. Because they're genetically related to me. Oh, gee, that's special. reason I suddenly understood why other people have ah, kids. Ah, here we go. Now we're going to get it. So now the reason why she suddenly understood had something to do with God. The bright light shined, and it said to me, Thou shalt procreate for no good reason, because you're just an ignorant bitch. You can't get over your ovaries. Or something like that. Two years ago, it had nothing to do with me. It wasn't an intellectual choice at all. I think it was just... A hormonal... Right, so hormones. So we, we have this hormonal thing. So all the other animals in nature, right? 
none of them have kids thinking I'm going to have kids, right? I mean, realistically, lions don't have sex. The female lion isn't going, oh, I just can't wait till I have the litter. They don't know that sex is baby making. They're not going, oh, I'm going to have a litter now. Little babies are going to poop out of me. It's going to be fun. No animal in nature has any such hormonal instinct that says, I'm going to go have kids now, so I guess I better have sex so I can have kids. No. No, there's no hormonal. No, 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 no. Tiffany, that's grimly predictable. You know, lots of people had said to me when I was in my 20s, you'll understand when you're in your 30s. But those people are pricks because that doesn't happen to everyone. I've, I've noticed. Yeah, well, whatever. It didn't happen to everyone, except, but it did happen to you, apparently. <laughs> apparently, you got kicked right in the old whatever hormone thing. The hormone thing that says you need to take care of your genetically produced offspring. Not that you all of a sudden have a need to cuddle children or something. I mean, maybe that's a hormone thing cuddling, hugging. You know, maybe instead of a fucker, you became a cuddler. All right, so you're getting all cuddly instead of, you know, horny or something like that. I don't know. Maybe you're horny and cuddly. Okay. <laughs> but the fact that you need to cuddle something or whatever it is, this hormony thing you have, this, oh, little naked human buttums or something. I just want to stroke one and clean up the poo that comes out of it and such. And play with its willy. I don't know, whatever your thing, whatever this hormone thing is, it says, ooh, I gotta have little babies around me, going good, yeah, and vomiting and shit. I love little baby vomit. Ooh, I wanna hold it up close to my breast and have it vomit on my chest. <laughs> oh, there's a hormone that does that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, there's been some men, you know, they get pumped full of the estrogen and all that kind of stuff, or they do the transition thing. I don't know whether they ever get, like, a desire to have a baby puke on their chest. <sighs> Whatever. Just this. Increasingly, you know, people of my age and past childbearing age tell me they never had any parental instincts. And I think there's probably a reason for that, that um, the decision not to have children is very similar to the decision to have them. It... Fuck. No, it, it's completely opposite. One, yes, arguably is completely emotional, socialization, um, bullshit psychology, just some sort of thing you do because the Borg says so. It's lemming behavior. And the other one is exactly the opposite of lemming behavior. It's stopping and saying, hey, why am I jumping off this cliff? Because everybody else is doing it? <laughs> Why am I doing this? Oh, because genetic code? Oh, yeah, that's silly. Why am I doing this? Ego vanity? I want to make the next, uh, you know, rappy pappy guy who's going to make a whole bunch of money and wear gold rings and shit. And I'll be proud of that accomplishment somehow. Ooh. No, I don't think I'll do any of those stupid things. Yeah, so completely different decisions. It's about... Uh, making a difference to the world beyond yourself. Oh, what a crock of motherfucking shit. I mean, Jesus, you can't, you can't, this is such a bullshit rationalization. You know, Piero uses this one. Well, I had kids because I figured I was going to make an army that was going to fix the world. Well, yeah, it sort of totally failed. They just made sluts who killed themselves. But anyway, uh, that was my plan. Fuck. I mean, she already admitted you have no control over the experiment. And she's smart enough to know that statistically, they already found this out, that your kid is likely to do the anti thing. It's likely to see you as an old fucking naggy hag, and it's gonna to try to be everything you're not. That's how it works. <sighs> Fuck. Catholics are grotesque sinners. <laughs> yeah, see, that's how it works. They try to make them Jesus, and they come out to be fucking goddamn scummy Abrahams or something. And making a difference to the future of the species as a whole. In the past... I mean, well, just amazing. I'm going to program it to be a cyborg for good. It's going to be... It's going to live knowing that animals suffer horribly, and it'll spend its whole life trying to grab hamburgers out of people's hands, and it'll, it'll be just such a wonderful gift to the world. 
I mean, even if this was true, even if you could possibly do this, you understand you're saying, I'm going to sentence my child to be a servant to problems I didn't fix in the world, problems my generation left. I'm going to force my kid to clean up. You don't see how that just fucking sucks. You weren't willing to get on your hands and knees and 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 deal with the the crud and the scuzz, and but you're going to chain your child to it. Oh boy, love has no dot 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 than mommies, right? Ooh, gotta love the mommy. Ew. The only way you could do this was by having children, because there were no problems, you know. So the conditions were right for everyone to want to. Now that the <laughs> well, anyway, that that was never true. So that's just a crock of shit. It was always they all knew life is gnarly as fuck. All right, but it's yeah, they're too lazy, or they're too reckless, they're too sloppy, and yes, you you get the perk of some social status uh you know if you commit this crime if you become one of the criminals the rest of the it's like a pirate code or something yeah so once you rape a woman yeah now you're part of the gang so once you molest a child you can be part of our gang of molesters there are major fucking problems I think it stands to reason. Yeah, major fucking problems that I'm basically giving you rationalizations and excuses to ignore because you have a fucking hormonal impulse. Hmm. That some people's instincts will uh, realign. And I wonder if this is a biological... <clears throat> Again, instincts. It's not an instinct, okay? We only have an... Especially male, so if you're talking... If there's any guys in the audience, there's no, there's no fucking biological instinct to do any, any caregiving. You see, look, look at elephants or any... You know, you can find animals all over the place. They show up, get some tail, and then they take off for a few months, and then they show up, get some tail, and then <laughs> they take off for a few months. I mean, fuck this bullshit. They don't hang out and raise babies thing that's happening to us all uh, because certainly a lot more people seem to feel their work is better done elsewhere than in, in bringing up kids but if you <clears throat> well it isn't even, even about their work I mean bringing up kids isn't productive work it's just as likely you're going to make a perpetrator as you are going to make a victim these, are the, <laughs> these aren't good choices well shall I make a victim or shall I make the perpetrator that's pretty much all there are in the world, right? As victims and perpetrators. Your kid's either going to be sliced and diced by the system, or he's going to be one of the fucking evil bastards slicing and dicing the victims. So brav the fuck o. How productive of you. Have this uh, hormonal thing happen. <clears throat> well, again, you say it's a hormonal thing, and you have a little funky image of the brain saying, see, there's little brain pieces in here that says, I have to have my genetic spawn, and I have to do this vain, egotistical thing of having my own little special baby to love me. I need unconditional love. I have to force something to like me, because nothing, I can't earn it. <laughs> Is that what it's about? You have to force something to love you? I think it's interesting because it's not that clear what it's about. I didn't feel, I just felt depressed suddenly, like the world. Yeah, well, gee. So, and so, so you're, you're, the logical deduction was, gee, I'm depressed because the world seems inadequate and insufficient and my life seems uh, limited and constrained. Oh, it must be because I didn't have kids. Like, see, you could have come up with any excuse for that, right? You 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 could have just said, oh, it's because London put a Ferris wheel next to Big Ben, and that doesn't make any sense. You could have said there was a lot of things happening in the world that just, oh, it's just too disgusting, and that's why I'm depressed. But to say, because oh, it's because I don't have a kid. You could have said it's because you don't have a cat. Maybe if you had a cat, that would be enough of a distraction. Maybe that would keep you busy. You know, because you'd be spending all your time trying to figure out how to veganize it. Have lost some of its color. The things that interested me before didn't now seem to have as much meaning, and it felt uh, again. This is a human condition that uh, many people who have any kind of brain function go through. Is life gets 
Oh, been there, done that. Oh, I've been there and done that too. Oh, I did that and been there. Oh, it's looking all kind of samey. Yes, and it seems like many times it all just deteriorates into some sort of slop. Unfortunately, things don't like it better with time. They all seem to just rot and die. The little flowers rot and die. Mm. The, the, the rose wilts, you know, loses its beauty. And it's all very fucking goddamn tragic. And it's not going to be fixed by making a baby. It's not going to make... Not gonna, <clears throat> it's not going to fix the rose. You're just replacing the rose with another rose to wilt and die. Just creating more stuff to wilt and die. Not very smart. Like the expiration of my old identity as a result. Of course, this happens when you, you go through puberty... And you're not a child anymore. You're not interested in what your parents think anymore. You still love them. No, oh, whatever. I, <laughs> frankly, that didn't happen at puberty. That happened at about seven years old or six years old when they started telling me goddamn fables. It's God's will. Who's God? God is up in heaven. And if you say these little ritualistic words, I, uh, thou me, lay me down to sleep, and Lord to give me, don't, and protect Grandma from your terrible smiting because she doesn't deserve to be smited by you. Please, 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 don't kill my grandmother. And yeah, if you properly beg to this lordy gordy in the sky, everything will be okay, as long as you do it right. But you have to be polite, and you have to do it with your hands together, and you have to do these rules, and all that. Yeah, okay, I was already done with my parents having any fucking rational judgment. They're obviously imbeciles. They have no fucking clue what reality is if they think there's some asshole in the sky that needs me to tell him not to torture my grandmother. But the beam of focus has moved on, and now you're very interested in what your contemporaries think, because that... No, that's all kind of bullshit, too, because I already knew my friends were assholes, too. They're only my friend because I'm too terribly cool. <laughs> that's the reason why I'm their friend, is because they're too terribly cool. That's it. Can I somehow fuck his girlfriend, <laughs> you know, without him knowing it? Can I get away with something somewhere, please? Yes, it's all a bunch of usury. That's the group from which you're going to choose a mate, and they're going to help your genetics continue. And that's all. Oh yeah, well I never, like I said, I didn't really give a shit about that genetic -y thing. <laughs> I mean, really, I just wanted to move my dick back and forth inside of vaginas. I didn't really care about it, fucking genetic -y, genetic -y. It cares about making more of itself. Well, again, that's not what it cares about. So, again, where is the evidence of that? Where? Do you think salmon are thinking, i got to make more salmon so they can swim up this stream and die and then get eaten by the babies? Yeah. What animals thinking, i got to make more? No, they're not thinking about any of that shit. they got hard penises. They want to satisfy their hard penises. And so if the woman isn't, you know, if the woman isn't inclined, they're going to make her inclined anyway. It's really an insidiously horrible game. Little birds right now collecting blue shit to build little blue castles to impress the chicks. Look, I have so much time to waste, I can build you a blue castle. Oh yeah, that's brilliant. That's why, and that's because he wants to be a father. That's why the little bird did it, right? He, he collected all that blue shit and built the blue castle because he wanted to have babies. He wanted to do the thing with his penis. So this can happen in later life as well. See, I think, and I could be wrong. Ah, I... yeah, well, this subject, you're just, you couldn't, you're so far from being right that, yes, yeah, wrong doesn't even say it. I mean, you're just not on, this is, this is whatever, this is bicycles on train tracks. This is just not going to work. I think this is what, some men go through with the midlife crisis, whether they have children already or not. No, yeah, well, if they have children, they're already saying, how the fuck can I get out of this without it costing me a zillion dollars? Because I want to fuck my secretary, and I'm sick of that bitch, and those kids are obnoxious and ugly. Men are fertile for their whole life, so will be pushed around, stewarded by hormones... Well, again, it's the bitches, I think, that are mostly, and the rest of it is just men who are really, I mean, whatever, the whole argument. They got some sort of adequacy problem. 
you know, if you have to make, if you're a man and you need to make babies, well, you've got some kind of dick problem, okay? Because you apparently need to make some new dick because your dick isn't any good or something. I don't know what your problem is, but it's some kind of, you've got some kind of inadequacy problem. If you think you're going to solve something by having a kid, it's going to make you a man. It's going to make sex better. I don't, it's not going to make anything better. It's just plain stupid. <clears throat> And maybe pushed into doing things they intellectually don't want to do. Well, there you go. So why don't you just end the subject right there? Just point out that has most baby making has nothing to do with being intelligent. It has to do with being just a hormone driven. Oh, it smells like food, so I'll eat it. Even though it technically, no, it's not food. It's your fucking goddamn sister, you retard. Um, you know the way your brain tells you what you should be interested in, in my experience, is it scrolls through the back catalogue of all your previous experiences and hones in on things that it wants you to find relevant. So if it's trying to get you to want to have a child, it hones in on your childhood. Well, I don't, like I said, the, the psychology and the intellect are two different mechanisms, so I guess there's just really no point. Desire is a conditioned mechanism. Our preferences are... Have nothing to do. If you like sushi, you don't like sushi because of any intellectual thing. It's, there's absolutely no intellectual character to it at all. It's entirely just a subjective emotional response because you were introduced to do it in the right way. Blah, 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 blah. You had the positive experiences. They were reinforced, and that's why you like it. There's no other, there's no reason to it. So don't combine the two things. The reasoning is, is that you can recognize that something is just a compulsion. You can recognize that you're just, it's a, compulsive disorder and you can say stop turning the light switch on and off because it's just superstition it's just voodoo asshole don't be driven by voodoo Oy. and all I felt when I was going through this was like oh my god I'm depressed and nostalgic what the hell is this about and um, you know men who tell me well yeah I don't you still haven't explained how you proved <laughs> your depression or your malaise was caused by being childless. They're going through a midlife crisis, so they miss their mom. You know, they miss being a child themselves. I don't know. It's, I, I, I don't know, you know. I've had a small glimpse of <laughs> your male companionship, and I guess I would just argue that I don't know if you really know men. But anyway, whatever. I don't think that's real man. I don't think there's too many real men who sit there in the middle of their life and go, I want my mommy. And they miss the infancy of their now grown up children. They wish they could do it all again. Oh, God. Yeah, I really don't. I can't relate to this one at all. So, yeah, I don't know who she's talking about. Any men available to explain? Because, yeah, I just don't get that one. Do it again? I, I really, frankly, I haven't met any men with kids, right? Even now, they're you know, they, they know they whoops, they're they're willing to go. Yeah, okay, I whoops a little. You know, and I can't. You know, when they're really ruined, they're 55 and bald and all that shit. I'm sure they're not going to be saying, "Gee, I want to do that again." Well, maybe this is an instinct telling you <laughs> you want again an instinct. No, no, it's a social conditioning. It's a stupid social meme. And that's all it is. Sex is the conditioned, that's the instinct. The, the desire is, is the intimacy, the act. The consequence is not what you're after. There's no rational, there's no perceptual connection between the consequence and the act. The two, the, it, there's nothing about the act that says this makes babies. It took human beings a while to figure it out, even, you know? It didn't occur to them. You have to deduce it from the evidence. It isn't something that just, oh, yeah, I automatically know that when I stick my penis in a vagina, it makes babies. No. It doesn't occur to you unless you're informed. To do it all, yeah, you want to have more kids. So just because this happens to you doesn't mean you have to go with it at all. Um, and that. Well, I'm just saying that goes without saying something that completely unarticulated. 
uh, unexplained. It's not you're not even explaining it as some sort of desperate need. You're just saying, you know, oh, I have this notion in my head that maybe. No. And I, like I said, I don't even believe it. I don't believe that anybody's sitting around going, oh, gee, I sure miss those child rearing years. That happened to me seemed to pass in a, in a few weeks. But now that we have so many problems in the world, is there really any excuse to have children? I mean, surely if you have a parental instinct, you could just adopt. There are plenty of kids who need a home who are here already. I know, but even that now doesn't make any sense. So, so you're, you're this concept of parental instinct, one minute was somehow related to genetics and this and that and the other thing, and now you're saying it's just some ambiguous need to oversee and guide children through life or something. And I think you're going to call that an instinct. Behavior that strangled of anything obviously desirous. An instinct, you know. Well, on the other hand, there is a rationale to having children. I mean, we don't know what the meaning of life actually is. This is a... <clears throat> well, whatever that is. Well, you know, I, I'll explain it to you. You don't know? I, I can explain it to you. There's a, a compound, chemical compound called DNA. This molecule created other chemistry. And the other chemistry ended up creating an envelope protecting the DNA molecule. And the DNA molecule, instead of just making other chemistry, now all of a sudden became a blueprint to making another copy of itself. It didn't just make a copy of itself and let the copy just float around making other chemistry. It now became a it made chemicals in sequence, and the sequence of chemicals caused the creation of another cell, another, another DNA molecule with a set of chemicals and a membrane. And <clears throat> once that took place, you have this process of evolution, and all the, the evolution is guided by is survivability, a contest, a competition for, to survive. And so the first life forms polluted the, the world excessively. They basically suffocate themselves in their own shit and then they evolve the ones that evolved to be able to eat shit they survive so the shit eaters won so they took over the world and then they colonized the land and all they became was tools tools that enabled you to kill something and eat its suck its guts out suck its energy because energy was the value here the resource that enabled you to lay more eggs you could lay more eggs if you eat more food and that's the way it worked and it's just an insidious little robot war and that's the meaning of life. Life is just a fucking infecting machinery that has a <clears throat> that has a program that enables it to uh, that that it makes its primary function this idea of just reproduction, just make more copies, and whoever can make the most copies in the right way so they're survivable wins. So some animals have a strategy of I'll make one million copies, and that way. Nothing can eat them all, and so some of them have to live. And then other machines have a, I'll keep them inside my body and protect them, and I won't fart them out until they're half grown, and then, and then I'll watch them, and I'll take care of them, and I'll ensure that they win, because I'll fight for them. And there are two strategies. And we happen to be that latter strategy where, yeah, we have less, we produce less, but we value them and try to preserve them and protect them and get all obsessive about doing that. And that, I guess, is your little hormony thing. But that's it. That's the meaning of life. It's stupid. It doesn't have any rational meaning. It's a fucking goddamn virus. Period. Time-free, map-free, GPS-free journey across a landscape we know nothing about. We don't know if there's... <clears throat> well, whatever. So that, again, we know nothing Yes, of course, we know nothing. We've only built huge telescopes and incredible microscopes, and we got accelerators, and we got all this technology. We're figuring out all this shit, but now we don't know nothing. We don't know nothing. Yeah, we know plenty. We know that life has been fucking around for 4 billion years on this planet, 500, last 500 million years with sentient organisms eating each other. That's what we goddamn know. We know the mortality rates. And they're obscene for some organisms. Octopuses. Kill 10,000 of them so one of them can have sex. We know that. God, we don't know what happens after death. 
Look at oh, whatever. That's enough, right? <laughs> we don't know what happens after death. Well, we're done now, right? I, I mean, I, rational is now gone, right? There's some rational reasons to suspect something happens after you're dead. We know it's a, a freaking blood-filled, uh, <clears throat> neuron-active machinery that is your identity. Hundred billion cells in your brain shooting a bunch of electricity. And all of that shit doesn't mean anything. That's all superfluous nonsense because once that stops and once that's gone, somehow you are going somewhere. You isn't that. And the rational reason to believe that is what? Because Walt Disney said Tinkerbell's alive. Because Walt Disney said, <laughs> yeah, that's about all I can do. What? I mean, because if I go Jehovah, because Jehovah said... That's why I should believe something else is true. Mohammed says so. I mean, really, what, what, how can I even, you know, have, is there some step you can take into stupidity that isn't as clear as saying something as stupid as we don't know what happens when you die? Yeah, we do know. You cease to fucking motherfucking exist because that's what your brain is doing when it's active, when it's using all this energy. It's used, the most energy using organ in your body is your brain. It's making you alive. It's giving you your consciousness. It doesn't exist without the energy, without the neurons, without the quanta. <laughs> you're done. There's no fingerprint of your brain somewhere in the universe doing you somewhere. There's no image of it left behind somewhere to go float about and be you somewhere else. You can't figure that out. You can't be decisive on that question. There's some legitimate theory of life after death. There really is. There's some legitimate argument to be made about the possibility of somehow being after you're dead, that somehow some piece of you, some element of you, some anything of you is a you and that it's going to be someplace after you're dead, that somehow my computer, I can smash the hard drive and I can bash the memory and I can crack the motherboard and I can just smash the motherfucking shit out of it and somehow whatever was written on that hard drive is still... Still out there somewhere, and if I was clever, I would build a jar and I could catch my old hard drive back and I get it all back again. Magic. Too silly. Too fucking silly. Alright, anyway. Maybe I'll play the second half of this some other time. <laughs> but really, shit. Now, you know, I like Carrie, obviously, you know, and, you know, we, we talked about this shit, and, yeah, you know, I just sat there, you know, I mean, some of it we talked about publicly, I think, but, you know, we had private conversation, and I was like, you know, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what, 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 okay, anyway, no, so, no, no insult intended, but I'm, um, you know, you got it's, it's, There's no way you can avoid being insulting when you're saying, "Hey, guess what? You're being kind of stupid." <laughs> this is a stupid analysis. It's ignorant. It's just ignorant. It's, like I said, when you resort to, we don't know. No, we do know. We statistically know how many kids are going to get diseases. We know statistically that you're going to die. We know statistically that you're going to die a certain amount of length of time it's going to take to kill you. Um, we know that you're going to do some gurgling and vomiting and this and that and the other thing to get there. That the road isn't going to be fun. You're going to be on painkillers and this and that and all this other shit. And people are going to be making decisions about, well, how much morphine should we give him? <laughs> yeah, that's life. That's what you're sentencing your kid to do is to live this stupid thing where I'm going to compete with my friends, try to get the best woman, then the best woman's going to turn into a succubus bitch, and then she's going to get fat, and then I'm going to be depressed, and I'm going to fuck whores, and I'm going to get herpes, and then I'm going to get AIDS, and then I'm going to die. I mean, what's the grand good story? Again, point to me the fucking human that I should say, oh, gee, that is such a great life. I so desperately want to be him or her. Who, who, who? 
Who, who, where is this life that I want to live? Where is it? Show me this beautiful life I want to live. Who's living it? It's a compulsive disorder. Life. If I give you, you will want. It's just you're stuck wanting. The more I give you, the more you want. It just, it just does this to you. I give you one, then you want two. I give you two, you want four. Show me the thing in, above it all. The Dalai Lama. What, I want to be a fat imbecile? Who wears dresses? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm just just thinking how ludicrous it would be. I mean, it's a cartoon character. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just saying. I, the Dalai Lama is supposed to be some sort of sacred thing. I saw him in some interview, and he's wearing a you know puts on a baseball cap, and he's like, oh, I'm wearing a baseball cap because it has the university logo on it." Uh, it's like a retard for fuck's sake. He always wants to be called Your Highness or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's above it all, except you have to call him your lordship or whatever the fuck it is, your sacred kindness, your uh, devoted wonderment, or whatever his title is. Oh, I want to be that? No. I don't want to be any of this shit. <clears throat>